Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about Firox. Now in the world of Rust Game Engine, there's two major players. There's Firox and there's Bevy. Now Firox is the one that's more editor focused. It's the closest to a Unity or Godot type experience that you're going to get. So if you're interested in doing Rust game development, but you are looking for tooling to go with it, well this could be a good pickup for you. And this is what you see in front of you uh, is the editor environment. There we go up here, you see kind of a sample level, how it is all strung together. Uh, everything in here has properties. You can see them over here. I'll show you how all the things look and hook together and so on uh, in just a second. But it's got your, your typical editing type environment. So example, if I want to instantiate something into the scene, boom, literally drag and drop it into the scene. Now what you might be wondering is, okay, what exactly is this? Well, it's a prefab of sort, but it's also just a scene. So for example, I can come in here, go file, load scene, not save what we've got here. So that was the uh, zombie model over here. So let's go on down here. We will find the zombie, open it up. RGS is the name of uh, the scene files. The RGS, I imagine, is a leftover from when this used to be called the Rage Engine. Uh, and here you can see it is composed of a number of different things. So Mixamo rigs, so you're seeing the entirety of the rig here. But here is your zombie. And then you'll notice here also we've got an animation of player attached to this guy. So I can actually right-click and add... Uh, new things, so you see all the various different components that are built in, your typical things, your lights, your billboards, particle systems, train, decals, and so on. Um, but you'll notice this guy has an animation player attached. One of the big areas of improvement of this particular release is in the animation tools. So you can bring up this animation editor over here. So we got a variety of different uh, animations there. Uh, and if I... Let's see, I think I'm actually fully expanded. Okay, so if I move over here and we preview this animation, you'll see the results of it over there. We could switch out to a completely different animation over here. Um, idle, let's, let's preview the idle animation. Like so, uh, and you can control all over all the keys and so on over time here. Another thing that they've got going on here is this blending state machine functionality here as well. And here's where you can blend between a variety of different states. We'll get to this in the readme of the update in just a bit. So the upper and lower body here. So upper body, you're going to see kind of this uh, dog's breakfast of things going on here. So this is your different animation. So your idle, walk, uh, melee attack, dead, aim, and so on. And there's tools available for like blending between animations. And again, we'll get back to that uh, when we get to the... the um, the release notes of the 0 0.30 release. It kind of gives you an idea. These things work as prefabs. Now, you may be wondering, okay, how does my code hook up to the entities in the game world? Well, I know nothing about Rust. It's been on my to-do list to learn this programming language for a very long time, so I'm not going to explain how the code works. I'll just show you how the link seems to work between the editor and your game project. So let's load up a different, simpler scene, uh, and this is just a uh, gun model. So go down here. There's an AK-47 model right here. We'll open up the RGS file for it, and done. All right, so here you can see it's made up of the model, the stuff that goes together. Also here, we've got a laser sight here, the ray that's cast out of the laser sight, and so on. So you wonder, okay, I'll go back to my root model over here, and you're going to notice there is this script tag here, and it is of type weapon. So if I open up the source code for this same project, which, by the way, I will have links to this project so you can download it and check it out yourself here, here is weapon. So here you see the controls for the sight of the weapon. Uh, this is the weapon itself. So, again, I, I don't know Rust programming, uh, so I, I can't really tell you how this particular code works. One thing I have noticed consistently, though, is there's ability to call back into the scene graph. Uh, so, yeah, here we go. So, context.scene.graph.this. So, this is like locating itself in the game world. So, this is how you would actually hook back into the scene graph of the object that um, the script is linked to. So that's how you would link up with the world itself. So that is how they, the two things seem to work together. Uh, so now let's head on over and take a look at what is new in this particular release. So here we are in the Firox 0.30 release notes. They say that this is the biggest release since uh, the very beginning of the project. I mostly focus on animation, the editor, audio, quality of life improvements, and more. Now, I'm not going to really get into the weeds here. I will link this article if you want to check it out yourself. But in terms of um, improvements in this particular release, there was a lot here around uh, animation. So there's now support for root uh, motion in the animation. There is a video here if you want to learn a little bit more about how that works. Uh, there is blend space. Uh, Blend space space editor. I can't speak today. Blend space editor here. So you can see they're, they're switching between the various different states. The walk, the 
the strafing and so on, uh, and how you can do that using the editor. Uh, again, a number of different tools. We've got support for uh, blend shapes. This is a very common thing for doing, say, facial animations where you directly actually tweak uh, the vertices of the animation itself. Um, ability to animate material properties over time. Uh, compound rules for the ABSM. We saw the state manager in action earlier on, so you've got rules set up there. Uh, Animation-related effects for on enter and leave state events. Uh, so lots of changes to the animation system here. Uh, some refactoring in here. This one's a big one. We've got uh, Android support. Uh, so this has been requested for a very long time. Just added in. Now one thing to note uh, is they're using a very PC-oriented rendering, so performance could be pretty bad for complex 3D graphics, and they're going to work on getting an e OpenGL ES 3.0 version going forward. But hopefully we're getting to the point where Android hardware is damn near as powerful as on uh, desktop in some cases. So hopefully, even though the rendering techniques are PC-oriented on higher-end phones, you can get things going well. But on a lower end device, something that is 2015 or greater, uh, you should be able to now use it, uh, make your games for Android, which is a cool step forward. Uh, there's headless mode. This is often used for making game servers where basically there's no rendering done. So if you need to have a version of your game that runs like all the server, client state, etc., you can now render headless. Uh, changes to the audio system. Uh, were put in place, improvements to the scene graph in general. Like I said, I'm skipping over this pretty fast. Uh, uh, there's no limitation on the number of bones now. It used to be 64 bones per mesh. Now it's effectively infinite. Uh, you can do off-screen UI rendering. So you render to texture, which is now compatible with the HDR pipeline. So before they would look pale, that's a nice little fix there. Uh, improvements to the UI in general. The entire editor got uh, restyled a little bit. So you can see here the before and the after, uh, it's pretty mild tweaks on the whole. You've got things like they moved to icons over big chunky buttons. They shrunk down the uh, icons here a little bit and so on. You can also now search for assets, which is a nice new feature. So as you can see right here, you can search and filter down that way. Uh, audio improvements in the editor itself, including the things that won't just keep playing infinitely in the background now, which is nice. And again, a bunch of improvements to the animation editor in this release as well. So there's quite a bit in this particular release and it kind of keeps going. Changes to the resource management functionality of the engine. Uh, the train got improved. By the way, there is full train support in here. The train improvements actually are pretty big deal. So uh, you can now bring in a texture as a height map. Uh, there's improved chunking support. You can actually switch LODs, although if you go to a smaller size, you're going to lose some detail as a result. And what we were looking at here earlier on, this is the station Lapitus. Uh, this is actually the demo that we used here. So I will show you how you can grab that in a second. And then a bunch of uh, smaller changes here as well. So again, I'm not glossing over your work if your stuff didn't get covered. I'm just trying to make the video go at a reasonable pace. So definitely some nice improvements there. Uh, so Firox Engine in general, if you want to learn more about it, it is available at Firox, F-Y-R-O-X.R-S. Um, you see here, it's, again, a full-functioning, in-development 3D game engine uh, with its own integrated Firox editor that's kind of making it somewhat unique. There's a decent number of examples uh, out here for learning how to do various different things. On top of that, uh, one of the coolest things about this is there's actually a development book, uh, which I think I have linked here. Yep, so if, actually, if you go back here, you'll notice at the top here there is a book. Uh, so this gives you a full basic walkthrough of how to use the engine, how all the various different pieces go. So this is obviously your starting point. So it's nice to see documentation, especially in open source projects, is often ignored. So Firox has solid documentation in the form of this book. It is also obviously an open source project, as you can see from over here on GitHub. Uh, it is under the MIT open source license. So this just happened uh, literally a couple days ago. I'm going to publish this on Saturday. So it's two days ago this release came out, uh, and it's tagged as 0.29. Oh, no, this is an old release. I don't know why there's no... Okay, the release is missing. <laughs> uh, I'm Hopefully it's up soon. Uh, you can definitely uh, get it. So it's not up on this GitHub right now. I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, so hopefully that's addressed by the time we, we get here because uh, there is... We're on point three oh. That's what we just covered today. Um, and yeah, that, that's it. And again, if you're interested, the project we looked at here, the uh, Station Lapitus is what we checked out. Uh, if you want to check this out, if you've already got the Rust tool chain installed uh, and Cargo, uh, it's really simple to get going. And basically, I have the... I think this one's right... Uh, yeah, right here. So really, all you have to do to run it is clone the code down, uh, like this guy right here, and then... Okay, it's on the other window. To run the project, I should probably shut it down first here. So let's go in here. We will shut down the project right here. So, boom. so again, just clone this repository available right here. So just grab this guy, git clone that down. 
Uh, and then the command you want to run is cargo space run dash dash package space editor that will open it up in the editor. Otherwise, if you want to just run it as a standalone, I think it's executor uh, and then dash dash release. So be in the directory that you get cloned. And then this will do uh, all of the resolutions. It'll pull down any of the dependencies, anything else you need to go. Uh, one of the really nice things working with Rust is generally uh, building projects is very simple. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Cargo, uh, sorry, uh, Firox Engine 0.30 is released. Hopefully the GitHub gets an update soon as well. So I will have links to all of the relevant things uh, in the linked article down below. Uh, let me know what you think. So again, when it comes to the Rust game engine space, uh, there's the two major players. Again, there's Bevy and there's Firox. And if you're all about the editing tools and such, Firox is by far the most um, tool-oriented of the engines that are out there. And if it looks interesting, do be sure to check it out. So that's uh, Firox.rs. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.